Let's do this. Welcome. How are you guys doing today? This is gonna be my playtest review. Um, specifically, this one's gonna be on the Summoner class. Now, if you guys have seen my Megas video, um, I recorded it moments ago. So we're just gonna keep the balls rolling, keep it, you know, while we're, while we're in the mode. So for those of you unaware how Summoner plays, I'm gonna compare it to the first edition Summoner, Unchained. The original Summoner was considered broken by basically everybody. So let's not talk about that class. So the way Summoner usually worked was you would have you and you would have your Eidolon, which would have its own abilities. And then you had abilities that kind of worked between you guys. And I th you had your own spells. I believe you were also still a partial spellcaster as a summoner and you had your own spell list in first edition where you would you had more like combat control spells as opposed to like your damaging spells so keep that in mind so with that being said first things first boom 10 hit points plus so right away the summoner has more hit points than the Magus, who's doing the spell strike and stuff as we saw previously. Now that's an interesting thing to take note of. The other thing to note is this part. Your Eidolon determines what spells you can cast. So for you, those of you who are unaware, in second edition there are four spell lists. Arcane, Primal, Occult, and Divine. So whatever kind of Eidolon you are, whatever kind of summon your creature is, will actually depend what kind of magic you want to do. So it's similar to how an, a sorcerer would, depending on their bloodline, change what spells they can cast. Same way. And again, just, just like the last video, this is all the kind of the blah blah blah. So what I wanted to point out here is... Um, this gives you a bit of the idea for what they have in the playtest. An angel Eidolon gives you a divine, a beast gives you primal, some sort of like phantom gives you an occult, and a dragon gives you an arcane. Okay, pretty good option so far, I feel like, just for playtest. This is what becomes interesting. There's an actual icon that appears between you and your Eidolon that you can't hide. Um, I think part of the reason was this was in some games, you could technically, you and the Eidolon couldn't, you could kind of get off with the fact that it wasn't your, your summon. Like there was ways you could play it off. And then this part, highlight, capitalize, whatever you want to do with this part, read this part. You and your Eidolon share your actions, your hit points, and your multiple attack penalties. It is not you have hit points, and they have hit points. It's you guys have hit points. So, you can no longer just throw your Eidolon out and let them die. Because their health points is your health points. Um. Well... Uh, let me, let me I, that, sorry, that was a mistake on my part. Let me make sure. Also, it wasn't. I'm, I'm correct. Damage taken by either you or the Eidolon reduces your hit points. So yeah, if they take damage, you're taking damage. Um, this next part is, is also pretty good. Um, you take the worst effect. So if you guys are both caught in the same AoE, whichever one takes the most damage, that's how much you guys take. You guys don't take the same. You guys don't take double. Now this link is interesting. Because it means your actions also sh shared. As opposed to like a ranger who has a minion. You spend an action to kind of command them. Instead you guys, you get three actions and you can choose to either use it on yourself, your Eidolon, or however, however, whatever combination 
you want. Manifest, this is just the one that lets you kind of like make your idol on. It's back, ladies and gentlemen. As you saw in the Mangus, Mangus, the Magus review, they're doing it again where you have four spell slots and as you level up, you lose access to your previous spell slots. So you gain, so you gain stronger spells, but you lose access to the older ones. In exchange, however, you get this Eidolon creature. So we hope the Eidolon is decent enough for this, right? You would hope so. Um, so a few things to keep in note. They must be within the 500 feet of you at all times. You can't let them get, you can't let them like, just go really far away from you. But you gain some abilities. Act together. Once per round, not bad. You both can do something. There's no limit. You can you can you can choose the order and you can take different actions. So from one action you can both go. That's gonna be key. That makes it so it's not terrible. Share senses is kind of the whole like you lose your senses, but you see what they see. So if you want to kind of like scout through them. Um, and this part says that this part kind of talks about any magic items you have on you, kind of like what effects automatically go to them. Spell casting, hiding, counter obsession, that's all the same, you know, what spells you can cast, how it heightens, and all that. And they kept the charisma part, kind of like a social still, they are a charisma based caster. Conduit spells are your focus spells, if you will. And same thing, it just kind of buffs up your proficiencies and your um, spells and skills and all that stuff. And this kind of keeps going on. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go through all this because um, it's nothing really unique. Eidolons. Okay. So, proficiencies are the same. We expect that you guys share everything. And they kind of go into all the different, like, where the alignment's from, where the home plane is, what the size is, what kind of attacks they would have. Um, they give you suggestions, obviously, because you can make your own Eidolon. You can choose what, what they kind of want to be. And they kind of give you uh, the ability scores, what you're skilled in, this kind of gives you all the details about your Eidolon. Your Eidolons get special abilities and as you level up, they gain access to, to higher ones. So, with that being said, let's go right into the Eidolons themselves, the meat of this, of this dish. Angel Eidolon, this is your divine when this is your celestial being that's come down to help you. Okay. Traditions, divine. Okay, so that, so that means you're going to be casting spells from the divine spell list. Future ideas for home plane. Um, th so they're medium size. Their primary attack does 1d8. Second attack, so agile do 1d4. They kind of give you like suggestions like we might talked about. Okay, let's see what their abilities are. Hallowed Strikes. All your unarmed damage does one extra good damage. And this only does damage against evil creatures or those weakness to good damage. And this one also does non lethal. So, this one, so basically, kind of, if you want them to do non lethal damage or fight against creatures that might be, that might be weak to good. Okay, not that great. Um, Traveler's Aura, uh, this pretty much gives you protection from the element and kind of, uh, you can't be caught flat-footed and that kind of stuff and it kind of increases as you get, as you gain higher level. And Angelic Mercy, the 17th level ability, lets him cast a 9th level remove curse 
disease fear or paralysis once per day. So, the Eidolon, the, angel, the angelic Eidolon, seems kind of utility, defensive based. I'm not, it's not the one I would be looking to kind of like lay the smack down on, personally. Beast Eidolon. Primal. Okay, here we go. Alright, so here you guys have a primal. So now you do casting from the, the druid spell list, like that primal spell list. Um, same thing, same damage. And you guys will notice that the damage, the stats, are generally, generally the same. And this one has more like claws and jaws and fangs and horns. Okay, so what can the beast do? Beast charge. Two actions. Let you stride to let your Eidolon stride twice in a straight line and then attack with a plus one bonus as long as they move 20 feet. So they, they pretty much get a rush charge. That's pretty good. 25 feet, so it gives them a 50 foot charge basically. With a plus one attack. Um, it has to be in a straight line, but okay. Get them in, in someone's face really quickly. Primal Roar. 7th level ability lets them do an AoE roar that can demoralize anybody within 30 feet Okay, I, I can see that working as a, as a beast Eidolon and then the last one is Whirlwind Maul Which lets you have two actions Attack up to four enemies within reach And it kind of so that's not bad that basically means you can that gives you big AoE damage at 17th. We saw the Magus got something similar at like 20th level. I'm sorry about that, I had a brief interruption I had to deal with. So, Beast Eidolon. Between the Charge, the Primal Roar, and the Maul, the Beast one definitely seems to be more of your in your face Eidolon. They. Definitely seem to be the one to be more aggressive attacking. The primal spell list is okay, it's a decent decent spell list. So So far between Angel and Beast, I'm leaving Beast as being the better one. Devotion Phantom Eidolon. So this is the like a phantom, like a lost soul. Ectoplasmic spectral, okay. Occult, so this gives you access to, to the occult spells. Same thing, damage, it kind of gives you like tendrils. So if you want tendril, like you want like, a weird, like tentacle monster, or, like ghost monster. Dutiful strike. A foe within 15 foot of you hits you with a strike and deals damage to you. Your Eidolon is next to you. It allowed them to make a strike against the foe who, who hits you. And it doesn't even have to be within reach. So if he, if someone hits you within 15 feet, your idol automatically just smacks them back. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. It's a free counterattack, basically. Steadfast gives you plus two against all mental effects. And if they've all success against the effect, they get a critical. Okay, so that means your Eidolon gets a bit get, gets a bit stronger. Dedication Aura. After fighting together for so long, they gain a 20-foot aura, which has the Abjuration Aura and Occult Traits. Another one of your Eidolon's allies, which would be you or your party. Take damage, reduce the damage by up to the Eidolon's constitution modifier. Which is... Starts off at a plus three. You lose a number of hit points equal to half the amount by which the Eidolon reduces the damage rounded down. Okay. Mm. So what this means is... Say you have a plus four, eight, 18 con. You probably won't, let's be 18 con for your 
Eidolon. So anybody who takes damage within the aura takes four less damage, and you but you take two damage every time. Now we see why you have that 10 hit points for your, for your base. That's actually kind of important there. Um, I feel like the Devotion Phantom is actually a better defender than the Angel one, if you look at it. It has a reaction to attack, increases your saving throws, and it can kind of essentially do a damage absorb for your party. Pretty good. Dragon Eidolon. So the dragons. Perfect. Nice draconic creature. This gives you the arcane tradition. So this is your... If you wanted, at least now for the playtest, if you wanted to use arcane spells, it would have to be some sort of a dragon-based creature. Be it an ancient worm, dragon, drake, so be it. Breath weapon. Makes sense, You're, you get a free breath weapon. There's 1d6 damage in the air you choose, and it increases every two levels by 1d6. Does it say how big it, uh... Oh, you, oh, you can choose, that's, that's interesting. You can choose either a 60 foot line or a 30 foot cone. And you, get to, and you get to choose the element type. So that's a lot of customization. I'm not sure how piercing works as an element, as a, as a type. It's a breath of piercing. Okay. Maybe sonic damage, I guess, kind of like that. Draconic Frenzy. You eye line for so two actions. You dial on takes, takes one strike and two strikes with your the secondary attack. So they get three attacks. If any one of these is a crit, you automatically get back your breath weapon. Normally it takes 1d4 to recharge, but if they crit, they get it back for free. That is actually pretty that's that's some good that's some good utility there. And of course worm's breath. It pretty much means so once every ten minutes you get a you get a super breath. There's double damage and the area of the spell is doubled. So 17th level, so let, let's do the math here. At third level, it's 1d6 plus. So three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a 9d6 breath weapon at level 17. If you pump it up with worm's breath, it becomes an 18d6 breath weapon, which can be a 120 foot line or a 60 foot cone. Good God, is all I can say about that. Um, wow. Yeah, I can see a lot of dragons being used. Dragons, phantoms are pretty even good. Even the beast. I don't think the Angel Eidolon is that good. I feel like this one, if of any of the four that has to be kind of changed, this Celestial one doesn't really do much. Doesn't excite me at all. The beast one's pretty cool. The phantom one's pretty cool. Even the dragon one's really cool. Let's see. Let's not let's not count them out yet. Let's see what the feet have to say about him. Dual studies. Um, pretty much means you get to choose two skills. Your Eidolon's trained in one, you're trained in the other. And so basically it means you guys can kind of are good at spe specific things. Okay, whatever. Essentially that kind of gives you ability to give your Eidolon more sight or scent. Synthesis is an interesting one. This one allows you and your Eidolon to become one. It basically means you are your Eidolon. 
you become him. When this happens, the key thing for this one, you can't cast spells because your Eilon can't cast spells normally. But there is no limit to the distance. And you can't be separately targeted. You become one entity for all purposes. Your Eilon does kind of leave when you when you die though. So, okay. You pretty much do a fusion dance, essentially. And this gives you another conduit spell, which obviously we'll see at the end. Same with this one, Reinforced Eidolon, we'll see that one at the end. Distracting Summon Spell. So the other thing um, in the first edition Summoner was that the Summoner had a lot of Summon Spells. I think they even got it for free in 1e. E. So they, they were big into not only having their Eidolon, but they also had Summons as well. So whenever you cast a spell to cast a 3 action Summoning Spell, your Eidolon strikes a foe within reach of both the summoning creature and the Eidolon as a free action. So if you're going for like a summoner, like a true summoner build where you summon tons of creatures, you summon a creature, and the Eidolon gets a free attack against them flat footed. Okay. And this one just lets him cast cantrip spells. That's also, if it's not, you're going for a more magical base build. Alacrisis Evolution lets them make, gives it 10, 10 plus speed. Um, that there was a thing that I think in one edition, the way they did it, they had evolution points, and like depending on your level of your summon, they could have different points and different abilities gave them different. It was. I don't miss that. Amphibious Evolution allows them to have a. A swim speed or land speed if they're normally a swimmer. Tandem gives you one action for you guys to both move. So, why would you do tandem? Because you already have act together, so you could do act together and you both move. I guess it, it, like, I guess it just gives you more options to like do things to like spend. So like, you could tag the move so you guys both move together, then you do your act together to kind of do your own separate thing. So for two actions, you've got to do four actions basically. All right, that's pretty good. And this one lets increase the unarmed attacks. It, it gives them the kind of gives them built to do combat maneuvers and, and stuff. Climbing evolution, climbing speed. Hulking evolution. Now they become large. And you can ride them technically. And they even have a little like, uh, thing where you had to have two actions. Unless you have the feet, which then you're kind of able to ride your idol on it without the drawback. So it basically means if someone else tries to ride your Eidolon, they, you and the Eidolon only get two actions. And remember, the, if the Eidolon has two actions, that means you have two actions. So, Ostentatious Arrival. When you summon a creature or manifest your Eidolon, there always seems to be an explosion. So pretty much it does an AoE damage whenever you summon a creature, or summon your Eidolon. 10 foot burst, okay, okay. Little like, almost almost feels really like a bit like a Borderlands type, like a, like a Nova burst, this little AoE explosion. And this one is a shield, um, pretty much lets your, let your, they had something similar in 1e with your, uh, Eidolon can, can, can kind of like defend for you nearby. Okay. Flickering. So here we go. Now this is where you get, you get some like special ones. This is specifically for the Phantom Eidolon. It lets them pretty much flicker or go in, like insubstantial or incorporeal kind of in a way. 
They gain resistance to all damage except force and negative. But they can't use any of their strikes or actions that require so so they can't like they can't manipulate you while they're in this form. So it just kind of gives them this ability to kind of go act of go flicker, but they can't do as much. All right. So they can they can do damage, but they can scout for you. Magical evolution um, similar. This one allows you your idol to cast spells. Now you can cast bigger spells. Range evolution. This is a kind of important. Um, you'll notice none, none of the Eidolons have ranged attacks by default. So if you want them to have a ranged attack, it is an 8th level feat. Keep that in mind. 10th level, Boost Summon. This is a Boost Eidolon is a, is a conduit spell. So, you, so it kind of makes it target not just your Eidolon, but any summon creatures you have as well. Protective bond. Um, so when you guys saw, when you guys both are in the same AOE and you take damage, you guys take the worst damage. This just means you take the least now instead. And transpose lets you flick between you and your, your idol on, so you switch places. This was they had something similar in one e where you could just do that. Counter focus lets, lets you gain more of your focus points back. Summoner's Call. The islands manifested are more than five feet away from you. So it pretty much means if either you or the island takes damage, you can snap them back to you. Um, something similar to one of you as well, where they can have the ability to bring them back. Transmorgify. Okay, so this allows you to any of those like six level or lower evolutions, it lets you choose one to pick. So you could you actually, you could actually like make them large for like a day if you wanted to, or climb speed if you need to climb or swim. Okay, that's, that, that's pretty good. Your island goes a tougher hide. This gives them this damage resistance to physical damage. Plus one against all magic, so this is more evolutions. This one makes them huge instead of large. And now their reach on all the attacks increases to 10 feet. Does the large one increase their range? It does not. They become large, but they still have their normal range. This one makes them become huge, so 15 foot square, and they can get it range to 10 feet now. Big boy. Effortless Concentration, your turn begins. Um, same thing we saw this in the Magus one. You could sustain a spell without having to think about it. Winged ev Evolution, they can fly. And this is just kind of another thing to buff your... So what we are seeing here a bit is these conduit spells. There's quite a few feats involved with those. True transmogrification, so this takes your transmogrify from here and makes it so you can literally change anything you want, basically. So you can really cycle, you, you can really have like an ever-changing creature. Twin Eidolon is interesting, especially if you have like a, a hulking, a towering evolution on him. You become your Eidolon, so now, now there's sort of the, now there's two of, of them, basically. So could you imagine this? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making sure that before I say, I say I say this statement. You could so you could have a dragon Eidolon become him, and then there's two dragons that have breath weapons, and just go out. You could just have two. That, that's sold, done, sold. Eidolon's avatar. Um, gives you the ability to cast Planes, Shift, or Commune. 
it looks like. And a ton of boost gives you the ability to get a permanent quicken, but you can only use it on a conduit spell. On boost or reinforced. So these conduit spells, let's see what these conduit spells are all about. Boost Eidolon. Spend an action, give your Eidolon plus two to damage rolls. And increases plus two for every damage that they have. So one round more damage. I can that can be I can see that being pretty useful. Eidolon Sir Evol Eidolon Evolution Search. Uh gives you a bit of ability to increase the capabilities, gives them temporarily bonuses to their speed, their vision, their movement type. You can make some temporary large and so forth and so forth. Okay, so if you don't want to like go through the evolutions or the transmog transmogrifications, you can do an evolution surge to kind of temporarily boost them up. Reinforce, we saw that boost and reinforce were that big one. So same thing, this one gives you plus one to your AC and saving throw and resistance to all damage. You can't benefit from both. Hmm. So you, okay, so you, you can cast boost and reinforce. So you can kind of choose to make them go offensive or defensive. And unfettered means for two, you can spend two actions from one minute to make it so your idol can travel farther away from you. Okay. So what do we think, guys? What do we think? I think the worst Eidolon is the Angel Eidolon. I don't see much utility from them. Um, their abilities aren't that great. They give the Divine spell list, which is okay. But there's like many other ways to get that spell list, like a Cleric or a Champion. So if you really wanted to play a Divine Caster, that might be the only reason I would see to do it. Like if you want to be a healer, but you wanted to still play a summoner. The beast one is really good. The dragon one seems pretty insane as well. And so does the, the phantom one. So those are all pretty good. I'm actually pretty excited for these. And the evolutions, they did done it in a pretty good way. It's not that annoying. Like There's not many that have that like prerequisite where it has to be based on something else. The evolutions. The transmogrification ones are pretty good. Um, the boost, so you can kind of see you kind of having that control of bouncing the people back and forth. I like it. Do I think it's better or worse than the Magus? I actually think some of them might be better. Only because there's more to do, I feel like. I feel like the dangerous thing with this class, with these two classes, is... As a Magus, you seem to be kind of really focused on casting your spell and attacking with it. As a summoner, you have all this, which allows you to pretty much control your Eidolon, move him in, attack. He can come out, attack. He can, you know, do all his abilities. All that is here. And it's not counting the fact that you have your cantrips and your own spells. That you don't have to waste to do any of this. So you could... For instance, um, use that, what's that it's called Act Together, the, the ability I'm looking for. Scrolling back all the way, guys. Act Together. Spend an action, have you have him attack. You have your action to move into position. Then you can cast, so he can, he can attack, you can cast a spell. Or have them, or you can you can do an, you can do a range attack so you have a crossbow or something like that, and then spend two actions on a breath weapon. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, so there's a lot more like you know or, or or beast charge. A lot more versatility I feel like. So I definitely think some of that is a lot might be interesting to play. 
I'm curious to see when they fully open it in the actual Secrets of Magic book what other Eidolons they come up with. But overall, I think that they seem they seem like a lot of fun. They seem like a good class. So again, similar to the Magus video, if you made a summoner or if your friends made a summoner in your game or you're a dungeon master who made a summoner NPC, let me know. Tell me how it, how it played out. How did it work out? Was it good? Thoughts, things that they could, they could change? Did the spell restriction affect you or did you feel like you could still do a lot of stuff? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, the more videos, the more likes we get, the more videos we're gonna be making. I plan to make a lot of Pathfinder videos coming up, a lot of other videos, so stay tuned guys.